Hey, so what's up everybody? Welcome back to the channel, man. Back with another video. As usual, man, giving out the good content. Um, what we about to do today, we about to change this um, oil filler, sorry, oil filter housing gasket, man. So many words to put together, but oil filter housing gasket. We're about to change this out uh, real quick. Martin Price is doing, I got two videos and one for you. I'm doing the oil change and I am doing the gasket. Uh, the reason I'm doing the oil change because you need pretty much you change the oil when you do this anyway. So, uh, but um, also reason I'm doing this video, I put it in one of my videos. I think it was when I did the um, what's it called, the power steering fluid. I seen some leak, and I'm like, I know I ain't got no oil pan leak or anything like that. So I researched and researched. No one really had a video on it, so I got to do a video on it as usual. So that's why I do my YouTube channel. But it's just think this thing right here. Uh, leaks out so like the seals and stuff uh, eventually get bad I don't know why they that would they put a housing and make it like this and not just make it solid where you don't have to replace anything dumb design but it's pretty much easy fix it's just like the uh, if you are new to the channel uh, if you are if I'm sorry if you aren't new to the channel it's just like changing the um, the old cooler housing on the Dodge Charger so a little bit more tedious work honestly when it comes to the charger you gotta move a lot of stuff all the type of good stuff but i guess i would say it's easier since it's on the top of the engine instead of being this being on the bottom of the engine where the oil filter is so you gotta get underneath the car but you gotta do all the moving and stuff you're only dealing with um one two three you're only dealing with four bolts so i mean other than that man that if you to the channel make sure you like and subscribe to the channel man smash the subscribe button turn on all post notifications so you can notify every time i post a video so let's get into the video First thing you need a trolley jack or just a jack in general. Um, I just realized in the video, um, my jack is actually leaking. I had to put some oil in there or fluid, sorry. But this is an old jack. I have my little red jack that I have from um, Harbor Freight, which is a really good jack. I'll use that jack. Right now, I'm using the jack stand as well. Use a jack stand just in case it might fall on you or something like that. And right here, we using a tool that I got from Walmart. It's also what I have from my dart. If you watch my, if you aren't new to the channel, I use the same thing on my dart and on my charger, not my charger, on the journey as well. I haven't did an oil change on the journey, a video at least wise on it, but it makes it a lot easier and this spot is so tight, so you're gonna really need this. I think you should be able to get it with your hand, you might be able to, but I, I just get stuff in just in case so I ain't gotta go back to the store, so make sure you get you one of these. It's like $8 inside of Walmart. Also, make sure you have an oil drain pan. Once again, you want to do this when the oil is changed, so you see I'm changing the oil, but get your oil drain pan because it's going to be messy with the oil filter. It leaks everywhere. It's really in the worst spot in the world, honestly, for a car. So once you loosen it, you can just twist it by hand. <clears throat> um, if I didn't say this, you need to remove your oil filter because that's how you're going to get your piece off. So <clears throat> when you're doing this, you just want to go ahead and get your oil changed. You want to make sure your oil has to be changed. Go ahead and change the oil while doing this. So. And you can watch that on my previous video. I'm gonna put a link at the top right up here. Uh, I'm gonna put put the link on my oil change as well, so y'all have some type of reference. Cause I, I don't want to give y'all a repeat of a whole video, so I'm gonna show y'all the the actual uh, gasket filter. So right here, I'm showing y'all the um, radiator. Uh, where you drain the radiator fluid at, or coolant, where you want to say. You just twist that little uh, cap right there. It comes off by hand, really easy. You don't need to really use any wrench or anything, it comes right off real smooth, really easy. Also make sure you have a second container for that, a separate, sep a second separate container for that as well, because it's going to use a lot. So go ahead and uh, drain your coolant. Uh, once you get the oil filter out, drain the coolant. You want to do all these steps first before you remove any of that, uh, that gasket off. Um, it drains from that little hose for some reason, which is weird. I thought it would drain from that bottom hose, but it doesn't. 
But it still drains uh, decent, whatever, like that. So make sure you just drain it. I will say this, uh, make sure you get an extra um, a quart or so of um, coolant. You will lose a little bit of it. You'll see towards the end. And you'll see why while you're doing it, you'll lose a little bit more, even if you drain all of it. So go ahead and tighten your cap, uh, your radiator cap back, or not radiator cap, drain valve back, tighten that cap back so you won't have any more fluid drain. So I wanna go ahead and say it, sorry. The angle is so small, the angle is so small, you can't really get a camera in there like that. So I got my camera sitting on my tire. That's like the best angle I can get. Y'all saw the angle at the top I had before, a couple of scenes before, but it, you ain't gonna be able to see me moving the bolts or anything like that. I don't show everything because it's just so tight of a spot, but I am using some extensions, and I believe I'm using a 5 8 to get off the bolts as well, so. I will tell you to get another, another power drill, mainly like, I don't know what it is, I got it from eBay a while ago, but it's just more of a mechanic wise that you can work on. And more, um, it's just like it's just like the, the 3A drive that I'm using. So it makes it a lot easier. This is, this this saved me a lot of time. This will save you a lot of time too. Instead of having to crank it back and forth, crank it back and forth. This saved me so much time putting it off, taking it off and putting it back on. Once you get that bolt unloosened, go ahead and switch over to that 3 8 uh, power tool and just, you know what I mean, do what you, do what you gotta do, you know what I'm saying? Got it all. It, it, it man, it's pretty easy. It really is. It's easier than the Dodge Charger, in my opinion. Cause it's right there. It's a little tedious because of the spot, but um, other than that, you see the um, the actual um, the gasket is actually stuck onto the the engine block itself. So you can use a flathead to get it off. So I'm showing y'all this, but don't do it. Um, you don't need to take the holes off at all. And the main reason I didn't take my holes off because I couldn't get that motherfucker off. So, and we really don't need to get it off in the first place. It's pretty much stuck on there unless you really fiddle, fiddle with it a lot. You can get it off, but it's just tedious for no reason. Don't even worry about doing it. Sorry, a lot of commentary. I've been playing some copyrighted music, so I can't. Wish I can uh, say it while I'm working on it, but um, I didn't notice there was a sensor there. If you see to your right, there's a sensor. Uh, make sure you pull that sensor off. I was just messing up the damn wire. It's just one wire. But I ain't mess it up, but you can mess it up and you can break it off. But um, on this car, uh, the wire is actually kind of loose. There's like really no rubber around it, but uh, I'm surprised it's been going on for that long. But yeah, make sure you take the sensor off before you move anything else. That's why I was struggling with it. I didn't really notice it until I pulled it back where you just saw it. So I was like, whoa. So this is why I said not to take it off, the holes off, because um, you can just pull it, you finna see in a second, I'm about to pull it all the way up to the top.
Sean Not gonna lie to y'all, man. I ain't gonna lie. I hate commentating videos at this point. Cause I like speaking in my videos, but um, you can just use a. Um, I'm just scraping off the the dirt and stuff like that. You can just use a flathead. Or you can use a razor, or you can use like a little. Uh, what is it? Called? It's like a little brush you can get from uh, Harbor Freight that goes onto your drill. I'll just scrape it all off, really. But you can use a flathead if you don't want to spend the money. Just use a flathead. You'll scrape it off good. And you want to do the same thing as well to the um, the where the, the same thing to the engine block as well where the piece came from. So you just want to get these clean as possible. I know I'm commentating my whole video. I always playing copyrighted music. I want to enjoy doing this stuff. Try to enjoy doing it, <laughs> whatever. But uh, once again, make sure it's clean. I'm using a flathead. You can use a razor or a little polishing brush. But um, there's really no need for it. So up there, I'm like, uh, you see that little ring? It actually is smooth. I don't know what it is. Just that top part was like the worst part that I actually scraped. The other part I didn't even have to scrape. The little bottom pieces of the gasket holder. But other than that, I'm gonna put some, uh, whatever this is, like some anti-seize, yeah, anti-seize lubricant on both that and the um, actual, <clears throat> sorry, on one on the engine block and then the actual, uh, that piece right there. To make the reason I'm also doing this so it also can um, kind of stick better on this because you put it in there, you want to put a screw right here and then a screw right here and then put it all the way in. It's really hard to show you this spot because it's in the tightest spot of the whole car, it's where the oil filter is at. Normally, where the oil filter is, it's always a tight spot on any car that I've worked on, but other than that, I'm gonna show you all the end results as well. Uh, that light is really actually needed, man. I'm telling y'all, get y'all an extra light. It pretty much lights up the whole thing. Um, this light was from, if y'all watched my um, video on this, uh, had messed it up, or my wife had drove off, messed up one of the lights, so this was the extra light, so I used it as uh, actual hood light, whatever. So, actually it's helping out a lot, giving me a little bit more space, so even if your car broke down at night or something like this, it'd be good uh, to have. But other than that, man, let's put this anti seize on here real quick. I'll show you all that portion of it as well. Nothing out of the ordinary, nothing too serious. And then, uh, like I said, I was commentating pretty much this whole video. Um, this hose is actually like, I won't even need this clamp. It's so tight to where you don't even need the clamp anymore. But um, I couldn't even, I'm not, I'm not even worried about trying to get it off, don't really need to. All I gotta do is put this on there and that's pretty much it. Put the four bolts on there, slap it on there, that's it. Nothing too hard. You just wanna put a thin layer on it. Nothing too heavy. Just a little dabbing. And then once again, you want to do the same for the um, the piece on the engine block. You don't want to put it directly on the um, the gasket. I mean, it's going to go on the gasket, but y'all know what I'm trying to say, man. So as simple as this, do it like that, boom. Just a little bit. Just going over it a little bit more real quick. Look like I missed some spots. I mean, it kind of blends in. It looks silver. But other than that, that's it for that. I'm going to go ahead and put that on there with my two screws real quick as well. I'm going to be careful pulling it down since obviously it's a tight little spot. Uh, when you're doing this, all the screws are the same size and the same length, so you don't have to worry about anything. So once again, a quick appearance. I mean, I did a lot of commentary on this video. Uh, here I go. So these are real flat. My shit kept leaking. I was wondering why. This is the OEM. Like, this is the original, how they built the car, OEM. Let me show y'all that it is, too. Uh, says Ford somewhere. There we go. You say Ford right there. That's the OEM. That's not an aftermarket part. That's the OEM part. That shit lasted over 200,000 miles. So I guess the guy, when he bought it, he would have replaced this if it was, but clearly he's not driving it every day. When you drive it and park it, and drive it, park it, drive it, park it, it eventually, it started leaking a little later. It wasn't leaking originally when I first got it, but it started leaking a little later on. I started to notice it, so yeah. So this part, this 
car lasted 200 and uh, I'm at 214,000 miles on the car. I put like 10,000 miles on it. I'm sorry, uh, not 10,000 miles. I put like 5,000 miles on the car at the getting it. So once again, the guy would have replaced this part, but obviously it didn't. He's not driving every day, so it didn't leak. Let's put this on here. Also, just to be, also, um, they have a piece. They have a one without the coolant and one with the coolant and one without the coolant. I didn't know they had two different pieces to it. So be sure you get the one that has uh, with the coolant. It's the thickest piece that you can get. And this is the thickest piece that you can get. I didn't know they made different ones. I thought all the engines were exactly the same. So just FYI on there as well. There we go. So let's pretty much hold them in. Um, so we got the um, everything back on there tidy. Um, make sure you put your sensor back on there. Don't forget the sensor. But now we're gonna put the oil uh, cooler on it. I'm sorry, oil filter on it real quick. Just can't tighten it. So I want to say this first, so if you're doing the oil change and the coolant flush, pretty much coolant flush with it, it's going to take you a good hour, it's going to take you over an hour. It is a little time consuming, but it shouldn't take you more, more than two hours, it's guaranteed. But what we're doing here, we just lowering the car, so we're removing the jack stand, or the jack. So if you did this with the oil change, go ahead and just pour, fill your oil up, filter back on, all that good stuff, right? So the same funnel, you can clean the funnel out or not, I clean mine out. Go ahead and put your coolant in your uh, coolant tank. Um, it should fill all the way through, all the way through. You shouldn't have to cut it on to let it go all the way through. Um, also, you shouldn't have to you shouldn't have to burp your system. I just tested mine out. I didn't see any air bubbles, anything like that. So you shouldn't have to burp your system at all. I've been I drove it and everything. So if you want to go up under here, make sure nothing's leaking. Obviously, that's still leaking just because the, uh, the that's where the oil drop there. It's still a bunch of oil. I'm gonna end up spraying that in the morning with a prop, my pressure washer to get all that oil and stuff out. But I'm gonna see it leaking. Anything leaking right there. In the gasket, so. We just wanna make sure the, uh, pretty much has coolant in here. That's all we're trying to really trying to do. I'm gonna kinda go to the store and get some more coolant. the bottom of his holes. He's trying to untrap a lot of air that may be in there. Should be good to go for the most part I don't see why any air would be in there. Uh, I squeeze the top hole and I squeeze the bottom. Down there as well. I don't sound like any air. I uh, pushed it and no bubbles came up, so I'm thinking that there ain't no air in there. Just to test your heater out, make sure you turn your thing on blast. Turn this on and turn the heat all the way up. I have it high fan, high heat. Just double check. Mine's is good. I didn't need to really burp anything, but once again, Double check it, it ain't moving nowhere. It's where it normally is at every time I drive this car. So, I'm that man, that's gonna make it a wrap for the video. Also, at the end of this, make sure you mark on your uh, sheet. I already did mine, but make sure you mark on your sheet. Come on, February 22. I normally don't put the date, like the actual, like the day of. As long as I know I did it that month, I'll do it, but I did it at 216,000 miles. And then I'll mark it down here as well. It's probably gonna be the last. Uh, one of the last major um, maintenance things I've done on my car within the past uh, a little over six months now. So, gotta be on the lookout for a video. Obviously, a year from now or six months from now, I'll do a video where I did in the past. It's probably literally like the last thing that I've done. The oil um, filter housing gasket. So, and I marked, I did an oil change as well with it, fluid check as well. And then I put it under my other tab. 
So that's gonna make it a wrap for the video, man. Uh, if you're new to the channel, man, make sure you like, share the video. Excuse me, let me know what y'all think down in the comment section below. What y'all think about the video? Uh, leave y'all comments down below. Make sure you smash the subscribe button as well. Turn on all post notifications about my profit. We getting bags no more. What did I just sing now?